Hey guys, Brian Schultz here with the Actually Tiny House Project, and in this video I'm going to show you how to build this shelving unit beside me here. Now, what you're looking at here is thick slab wood, steel pipe, and steel rod supporting the shelves. And this video is part of a whole series of videos I'm doing showing you different ways that you can work with steel that's a little more challenging than just screwing together pipe brackets, but doesn't require you to have a metalworking skill set. If you can operate a drill press, an angle grinder, and some basic woodworking tools, there is a whole world of clean, simple, industrial elements elements that you can add to your designs that'll really help you bring your furniture building game to the next level. So what I've done here is laid out all the tools that we're going to need and then I'm going to walk you through this project start to finish. All right, so first up here I have my Milwaukee cordless four and a half inch angle grinder. And this is what I'm gonna be using to cut and grind my steel pipe and steel rod. I am a huge fan of this particular tool. I have the version that has the switch on the back that stays on, which I think is more useful than the paddle switch, even though it's a little bit harder to find. I also like how this has a guard with a lever that just easily allows you to adjust it to direct the sparks wherever you want. And finally, I've got a combination cutting and grinding wheel on this, which is a little bit thicker. It makes it a little harder to get through your cut, but it's a lot less fragile, which makes it safer. And it's nice because I don't have to switch between cutting and grinding tasks. Now, coming down here to my drill bits, so first up here, I've got a Forstner bit that is just a little bit larger than the pipe that we're gonna be installing. And this is going to be used to drill a hole through the shelves, and then the pipe is gonna slide through it. Next, I've got a twist drill bit that is the same diameter of the steel rod that's gonna go crossways through the pipe. And I have another twist drill bit that's the same diameter of the lag bolts that I'm gonna be using to attach this to the wall. Now, coming over here, I've actually got those lag bolts that I'm gonna be using to attach the assembly to the wall. And then over here, we've got the pipe and the rod that I'm gonna be using. Now, of course, the size of drill bits, the size of lag bolts, and the size of pipe is all gonna depend on the size of your installation and how strong you need things to be. For our installation today, I'm gonna to be using three quarter inch steel pipe, and I'm gonna be putting 7 16 rod through it like that to support the shelves. Now, you can use all different kinds of pipe and rod for this. I just happen to be using black pipe because I like the look of it, but you can also use galvanized pipe, and there's different ways you can treat different pipes to get different looks, which I'm probably gonna talk a little bit more about later. Now, here you can see I've got a couple of rubber caps, and these are just gonna go onto the bottom of this pipe so it doesn't scratch up my floor. It's important to remember that this has thickness in the bottom when you're doing your layout, so you have to cut your pipe a little bit shorter. Now, over here, I've got a scrubby pad and I've got some denatured alcohol that I'm gonna be using to clean up the uh, steel pipe that I got. Now, it's important to note that black pipe like this comes in oiled and lacquered. And the kind that is lacquered is really hard to strip. You actually have to get chemical stripper and strip the lacquer off. And that's gonna give you a bare steel pipe. And then if you want it to look black again, you've got to use some gun blue like this to blacken it. And that's just a huge pain in the butt. So if you're looking for a black pipe, try to find the black pipe that's just oiled and not lacquered. Now, one more tool you're gonna to need for this is a drill press. I guess with the right jigs and the right drill, you might be able to do this with a hand drill, but it's gonna be pretty frustrating. So do yourself a favor and find a drill press to drill the holes in the steel pipe. Now, finally, we have the shelves that we're gonna be installing here, and these shelves are pretty darn nice. This is laminated hard maple that's left over from the countertops that we built for the tiny house here. Now, you could do this with solid wood. I've even built these out of dimensional lumber. I feel like they're plenty stable until you get bigger than about eight inches, in which case you wanna start considering laminations. Now, I've also done this with live edge boards, which has a really nice look to it as well. It's really whatever you wanna look at for your particular shelf. All right, so next thing we're gonna do here is mark out the locations where we're gonna drill the holes that the steel pipes will slide through. Now, the important thing to know here is that we're gonna be drilling very narrow clearance holes. So if these are even slightly off from shelf to shelf, your pipes are not gonna be able to slide through and it's gonna be a big problem. So when you're doing your layout on this, you wanna be super meticulous to make sure that all of these holes are in the exact same location and that they are exactly the same distance apart. Now, after that, where you actually put the pipes in your shelf depends on what you have for support and also what you wanna look at. If you've got a horizontal member in your wall that you could screw into, that's awesome because then you can put the pipe wherever you wanna see it. But in the case of this particular shelf, I'm gonna be going into two vertical studs that are spaced 16 inches on center, so that kinda of locks me into 16 inch spacing for where I'm gonna put my pipes right here. 
Now, as far as how far forward or back to put this on the shelf, I would recommend not going any further back with your pipe than 25% of the way from the back of the shelf because you want to make sure that you have some strength in that shelf so as it cantilevers forward, it doesn't overstress and start to crack where it meets the pipe. All right, so I've gone ahead and set up my drill press here with the large diameter Forstner bit for drilling the holes for the pipe to slide through. And you can see I've set up a guide rail along the back here so it'll hold the shelf so all the holes are drilled the exact same distance from the back of the shelf. All right, so I've got all three of my shelves drilled out right here and it looks like the holes line up just perfect, which is what you want to see. Now, if you're off on any of your holes by more than a 30 second, what you can do is take your Forstner bit and just carve the edge of the hole so everything lines up nice and straight. And that's the nice thing about working with Forstners is that you can cut the edge of a hole. Now, next thing we're gonna do is head outside and start working on the steel pipe. So first thing I'm gonna do here is just clean up this pipe. You can see the black pipe has some lettering on it. I'm gonna scrub this with a Brillo pad and some alcohol, and that'll get it down to this black pipe right here. Like I said before, black pipe comes in lacquered and just oiled. You really wanna go with the stuff that's oiled because the lacquered is really hard to get off. Now, there's lots of different ways that you can treat different kinds of pipe. You can scrub it completely down to bare metal with stripper, and that's gonna give you a really nice bare steel look that you can put some wax on. You can also scrub galvanized pipe and just make a nice clean galvanized look which is nice in certain applications and you can scrub galvanized pipe with toilet bowl cleaner which makes it really bright but that'll allow it to take gun blue which will darken it down to a really unique gray color. Uh, one of my personal favorites is just to lightly scrub old rusty steel pipe with a wire brush and then cover it with spray lacquer. It gives it a really nice earthy reddish brown look. So lots of different ways that you can treat your steel pipe for different looks and feels. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do is cut this pipe to length here. I mark it with a piece of tape because I feel like I get better results that way. I've got this braced between a couple clamps here so I can still rotate the pipe during the cut if I need to, but it's not gonna kick off angle because the danger with an angle grinder is if this gets deep into a piece of pipe and then it twists a little bit, this wheel can shatter and that's a really dangerous situation. So this isn't a course in how to safely use an angle grinder. I'm assuming that you already are trained in the safe use of this tool and if you're not, there's other ways to cut metal or you can have someone do it for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this cut. Now I like to break this sharp edge right here by holding the angle grinder like this and then rotating this pipe. It just gives it a nice little chamfered edge. So next thing I've done here is just marked out where I wanna fasten the pipe to the wall. Now, before you drill this with a drill press, it's really helpful to get a punch and hit this really hard and make a little dimple. It's gonna make it a lot easier for your drill press to go straight down the middle of the pipe. Now, if you haven't used a drill press before, it's important, just like any tool, to make sure that your workpiece is really well clamped. I like to run a drill press on a medium to slow speed for cutting metal, and it's useful to have some cutting oil around because that's gonna make your cut cooler, which is gonna make your drill bits stay sharper longer. After that, you just wanna drive it nice and steady all the way down through the cut. Now, anytime that you're drilling a hole like this, even if you've already punched it with a center punch, it's good to do just a little bit and check it because oftentimes the drill bit will want to pull off to one side and you need to readjust the pipe. All right, so here we are back in the tiny house and what I've done here is a full-size mock-up of my installation. Now, this step isn't strictly necessary, but I feel like for me personally, anytime I'm building furniture that is permanently installed and non-adjustable, I wanna take a moment and try out different shelf heights and kind of interact with the space a little bit before I make my final choices. This is also a good idea because you could run into issues that you might not have realized otherwise. For instance, I've got an electrical cover plate down here that is gonna be pushed into this shelf a little little bit so I'm gonna to have to notch out the back of the shelf. Now once I'm sure that I like all of my locations I'm gonna measure off the floor and record the heights of the different shelves and also I like to mark the heights with blue tape on the pipe. It's a good idea to do both because this blue tape sometimes can scrape off while you're taking the shelves off. 
Now, another thing you wanna be thinking about here is your fastener locations. Now, obviously we already determined our fastener locations up above here, and I installed those while I was installing this mock-up here because I wanted to make sure the rails were gonna be perfectly parallel, but I haven't marked or installed the lower fasteners. And the reason for that is, one, visually, I just wanted to look at it and see where I wanted to see that, but also I need to make sure that I'm not gonna be drilling through any electrical or any plumbing inside my walls. Anytime that you're building a small house, you wanna take super good notes of where your plumbing and where your electrical is. And what I like to do personally is physically write the heights of those things on the walls with a Sharpie and then step back with my phone and take a picture before I cover the wall surface because it makes it a lot easier at this stage just to pull out my phone and scroll to the appropriate picture and make sure I'm not gonna be putting my fasteners where they're not supposed to be. Now, also, of course, you should be putting nail plates inside of your walls over your electrical and your plumbing because that's gonna give you an extra bit of insurance and you'll know before you accidentally pierce a wire or a pipe. All right, so next thing we're gonna do here is cut some rod for the support brackets and drill out these pipes on the drill press. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do here is measure out my steel rod for the length of my shelf pins. And I'm gonna make these so they're flush with the front of the shelves, but it can also look kind of nice to have them recessed a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this with an angle grinder. Anytime you're cutting metal, you wanna make sure you have good control over your work, you're making nice straight cuts, and that you're wearing full wraparound safety goggles. Now, once I've cut the shelf pins, I've got a little technique that I like to use here where I roll the pipe while the angle grinder is running at an angle, and that's just gonna give it a really nice little chamfered edge. Now, after that, I'm gonna scrub this with some alcohol and a Brillo pad to clean this up, and then I'm gonna wipe it down with some gun blue, which is gonna turn it nice and dark to match the black pipe. Now, as long as I've got my gloves on and I'm already using the gun blue, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the tips of my lag bolts to darken those up as well. Now, I should also mention that for this particular project, I've made myself some spacers that are gonna sleeve around the lag bolts between the pipe and the wall, and I made these out of 3 8 inch black pipe. All right, so next thing we're gonna do here is drill the holes for the additional fastener locations and then also for those shelf pins that we just cut. But before I do that, I'm gonna get myself a torpedo level. I'm gonna put the drill bit in the drill and I'm gonna physically check to make sure that this drill bit is perfectly vertical because that's gonna help me to get my alignment to make sure that I'm not drilling my shelf pins at a slight angle to each other. So the way that we're gonna keep these holes perfectly aligned is we're either gonna take a shelf pin or a fastener and push it through the last hole that we drilled and then use a torpedo level to make sure that that's perfectly vertical. And if that's vertical and the drill bit is vertical, then of course you're gonna be drilling parallel holes. So now I've switched up to my slightly larger drill bit here for drilling the holes for the shelf pins. But before I drill these holes, I'm gonna find something that I'm certain is perfectly square and I'm gonna check to make sure that this drill bit is exactly 90 degrees to the pipe. Now, once I've drilled my first hole for my shelf pin, I'll actually put a pin in because it's much easier to align off a shelf pin because it's not as wobbly as a lag bolt. And in addition to using a torpedo level, you can also just sight this directly and it's pretty apparent if the pin is out of alignment with the drill bit. Now, once I'm done drilling, I'm just gonna take a minute to clean up any sharp edges with a file here, and now we're ready to start the assembly. I've got my pipe, I've got my pins, and I've got my shelves here. Now, because these shelves are gonna be standing an inch and a half off the wall, what I've done is I've just supported these two pipes on some two by four, so now all I've gotta do is take my pins and pound them through, and as soon as they're touching the floor here, I know they're gonna be spaced correctly. Now, you always wanna pound in the pins at the bottom first, and then you're gonna slide the shelf down over it. So I'm gonna pound in the bottom shelf pins first. I'm gonna slide the first shelf into place here. Now I'm gonna pound the second set of shelf pins in. I'm gonna go ahead and slide the second shelf in place. Pound in my last set of pins. I'll slide on the last shelf. And we are ready for install. Now, I've already got my fastener holes up here from when I installed this for my mock-up, but I wanna show you how I drilled those holes because this is really important. Now, first, I'm gonna start out with the drill that is the same diameter as the hole through the pipe, and I drill through the pipe into the sheetrock and just barely into the wood behind it. And what that's for is because I need to be able to center the pilot bit perfectly inside of this hole. Now, next thing I'm gonna do is get a really long pilot bit. This one happens to be 12 inch by 3 16 which is just perfect for a 3 8 inch lag bolt. I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna push it through to where the tip finds the center of that hole back there. I'm gonna make sure it's centered in the pipe, and then I'm just gonna drill this until I get to whatever depth is the length that the lag bolt is gonna be. Now, 
Finally, I'm gonna take my lag bolt, and if I'm using them, a little sleeve here. I'm gonna put it between the pipe and the wall. I'm gonna put the lag bolt in right here. If you're not really experienced with a driver, you should probably just use a ratchet for this. I'm pretty comfortable doing this, so I'm gonna go ahead and drive this mechanically. Now the point is you don't want to overdrive your fasteners obviously. So that's the procedure for getting your fasteners straight in line with your fastener holes. So that's pretty much it for building the shelving unit right here. I'm really stoked at how this whole thing turned out. This is probably one of the nicest ones of these that I've built yet and it took me less than a day to do it. I feel like this is a great intermediate project for somebody who's looking to start adding some metal to their designs but isn't ready to buy a welder and start learning how to weld. So. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. You can also check us out on our website, which is actuallytiny.com, where we've got a bunch more tiny house videos, a growing library of tiny house resources. And while you're there, consider making a donation because it really helps to support all the time and effort that goes into making all the free videos here on the channel. All right, that's it for now. Take care, have fun, be safe building your tiny house.